Okay, I was speaking on uh, the lady in the Apocrypha whose seven sons, they were tortured. He tortured them. One by one. You can read it in uh, 2 Maccabees 7 chapter. She had to watch each of her sons be tortured to death. Tongues cut off, limbs cut off, and burned in hot grease. That's what the Edomite king did, Antiochus Epiphanes. Mangled them. Because they wouldn't eat abomination that he put before them. Let me give you a conversation that she had with her sons. The last one for him to torment and kill. Let's uh, start at uh, 2 Maccabees, <coughs> the seventh chapter. Let's start at verse 20. It's pretty hard in looking at these stories that's real and not something that's fantasy. Knowing already what I'm giving to read is kind of hurtful. It's hard felt. But listen at this woman. Take it might be 7 and 20. But the mother was marvelous above all and worthy of honorable memory. Well, I'm speaking on her. For when she saw her seven sons slain within the space of one day, he killed them all in the space of one day. You can read it from verse 1 on. She bare it with a good courage. Hear that? She bare it with a good courage because of the hope that she had in the Most High. Yeah. She exhorted every one of them in her own language, filled with courageous spirits and stirring up her womanish thoughts with a manly stomach. She said unto them, I cannot tell how ye came into my womb, for I neither gave you breath nor life, neither was it I that formed the members of every one of you. Seven of her sons. She watched all of them be tormented by this so called white king, Edomite king, Antiochus Epiphanes, for not eating abomination. But doubtless, the creator of the world who formed the generation of man and found out the beginning of all things will also, of his own mercy, give you breath and life again as ye now regard not your own selves for his law's sake. You hear that? For all you say we ain't under the Most High's laws, say the Most High gonna give them mercy and bring breath into another body, another life, for his law's sake. Now Antiochus, thinking himself despised and suspecting it to be a reproachful speech, while the youngest was yet alive, did not only exhort him by words, but also assured him with oaths that he would make him both a rich and a happy man if he would turn from the laws of his fathers, from the laws of the Most High, who he gave to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to the twelve tribes of Israel, 
and that also he would take him for his friend and trust him with affairs. Right? But when the young man would in no case hearken unto him, the king called his mother and exhorted her that she would counsel the young man to save his life, the last one of her son, the seventh son. So he called the mother and said, counsel your son that he could save his life. And when he had exhorted her with many words, she promised him that she would counsel her son. So she promised him that she's going to counsel with her son, right? We got to see what she said to her son. But she bowing herself toward him, laughing the cruel tyrant to scorn, spake in her country language on this matter. O oh, my son, have pity upon me that bear thee nine months in my womb and gave thee suck three years and nourished thee and brought thee up a unto this age and endured the troubles of education. I beseech thee, my son, look upon the heaven and the earth and all that is therein and consider that the Most High made them of things that were not and so was mankind made likewise. Fear not this tormentor this is what you're telling to her last son, her seventh son. Say, fear not this tormentor, but being worthy of thy brethren, take thy death, that I may receive thee again in mercy with thy brethren. While she was just speaking these words, the young man said, Whom wait ye for? I will not obey the king's commandment, but I will obey the commandment of the law. That was given unto our fathers by Moses. That's the dietary law in Leviticus 11 chapter. Just in case you didn't know. And thou that has been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews. Shall not escape the hands of the Most High. For we suffer because of our sins. Hear that? Sin. They suffer because of their sins. And though the living power be angry with us a little while. For our chastening and correction, yet shall he be at one again with his servants. He's going to be at one with his servants, children of Israel. But thou, O godless man, O unrighteous man, King Antiochus, Antiochus Epiphany, and of all other most wicked, be not lifted up without a cause, nor puffed up with uncertain hopes, lifting up thine hand against the servants of the Most High. You hear this? Everyone that can hear my voice from the Most High, as he's telling them, he goes out to all those that's bringing those plagues and doing the things that they think they're going to do to the servants of the Most High. But thou hast not yet escaped the judgment of Almighty Power, who see of all things his eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. For our brethren, who now have suffered a short pain, are dead under the most highest covenant of everlasting life. But thou, through the judgment of the most high, shall receive just punishment for thy pride. But I, as my brethren, offer up my body and life for the laws of our fathers. See that? He said he's giving up his life for the laws of the Most High, the truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. He said, but I, as my brethren, his six brothers that he watched, be tormented to death by this king, Antiochus Epiphany, this Edomite king, offer up my body and life for the laws of our fathers, beseeching the Most High that he would speedily be merciful unto our nation. And that thou, by torments and plagues, may, mayest confess that he alone is the most high. You hear that? That thou, O King Antiochus Epiphanes, through, and that thou, by torments and plagues, mayest confess. 
you being tormented and plagued may confess that he alone is the most high. And that in me and my brethren, the wrath of the Almighty, which is justly brought upon all our nation, may cease. Then the king, being in a rage, handled him worse than all the rest, and took it grievously that he was mocked. So this man died undefiled and put his whole trust in the Most High. Last of all, after the sons of the mother died, let, let last of all, after the sons, the mother died. Let this be enough now to have spoken concerning the idolatrous feast and the extreme tortures that this Edomite king, Antiochus Epiphanes, put upon this mother and her seven sons. So, that's got to be paid for, like he told them, you see? So, it's very important that we get ourselves together so that we're not subject to what it is that the most I have in store for these other nations. But, you know, there's a saying going around, it's been around for a long time, in Romans 11 and 26, I just want to deal with that because it says, and so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away unrighteousness from Jacob, right? For this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins, right? So, when you see this, all Israel shall be saved. Now, this is not talking about every Israelite that walked this earth. Is going to be saved. Understand, overstand this. Trust me. And believe this because this is something that's been told of old. <laughs> and we got to clear this up because every last Israelite is not going to be saved. No way, shape, or form. Look look at, uh, just give you an example of what Amashe Goshai, everybody believe in him. That are Yasharala. Look what he said. In uh, Matthew the 12th chapter. In the 32nd verse. He said. Whosoever speaketh a word against the son of man. It shall be forgiven him. So he said you can talk about me. My second shot said you can talk about me. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Spirit. It shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world. This world that we are now. Neither in the world to come. You hear that? So that all means a certain number. A certain number. And we've been saying forever through the scriptures. Hmm, that one third is going to be saved, right? Well, I, I, I'll praise the most high, but I'll show my second of a shot. Turn the page and we're right to it. Uh, Zechariah 13 and 8 it said, And it shall come to pass that in all the land Said the Most High This is when we get to one third and two thirds Of Israelites going to be saved It shall come to pass that in all the land Said the Most High Two parts therein shall be cut off and die But the third shall be left therein One third Going to be left therein And I will bring the third part through the fire And I will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say it is my people. And they shall say the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is my power. You see? So that's that one third. Two thirds of our people are going to die. Two thirds of our people are going to die. Go back to Matthew the 12th chapter. Go to Matthew 12. Let's start at verse. Uh, let's read verse 32 again. It says, And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, who was a Mashiach Yahweh the anointed Savior of the world called Jesus Christ, it shall not be forgiven him. It shall be forgiven him. So like you. It shall be forgiven him. You talk against him, it's going to be forgiven you. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world, 
nor neither in the world to come. That's what he said. It's not going to be forgiven you. Neither in this world or the world to come. It says, either make the tree good and the fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by its fruit. So, he let you know that these fruit that come from the trees, they're either good or they're corrupt. And no uh, good fruit is going to come from wicked fruit. You know, wicked fruit going to bring forth good fruit. That's why I say either make the tree good and the fruit good, the lineage of that man good, or else make the tree corrupt, wicked, and its fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. You hear that? The tree is known by his fruit. The man is known by what he, the, the children that he bear. Listen, old generation of vipers. Hear what he said? Old generation of vipers. He calling them vipers. Poisonous snakes. Talking to the Israelites. How can ye, being evil, speak good things? That's why when you look at these evil children of the devil of our nation, Bringing back righteous people. Listen. Old generation of vipers. How can ye being evil. Speak good things. For out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaketh. And the heart is, the, is, is your mind. A good man. Out of the good treasure of the heart. Bringing forth good things. And an evil man. Out of the tre his evil treasure. Bringing forth evil things. You see. So, but I say unto you, every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. See, so it's very important so that you understand what he's saying here because he's telling us in Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, the 60th chapter, verse 16, Isaiah 60, verse 16, said, Thy people also in the kingdom shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the most high's planting, not no man's planting. The work of my hands, the work of the Most High's hands. Why? That I may be glorified. That the Most High can be glorified. So, would you understand what he's saying? Yeah. All of the one third of the 12 tribes of Israel going to be saved. You're saying it, but you don't. You forget it when you get to Romans 11, 26. It's very important. That you see this because I don't think everybody sees this because you still I still hear it. Look what he said in verse 14. He said, if by in verse 14 of Romans 11 chapter, if by any means I might provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, and might save some of them. See? How is some of them gonna be saved if all is gonna be saved? Might save some of them. That's why he said all is a certain number. And we know that certain number is one third of the 12 tribes of Israel. Point blank. Look at verse 7 of Romans 11 chapter. Well, let's read verse 5. It says, Even so then, at this present time, also there is a remnant according to election of grace. That remnant is that one-third of the election of grace. See? Verse 7, What then? Israel has not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, 
and the rest were blinded. You see? The election are the one-third of the 12 tribes of Israel. The ones that's blinded is in dark, this ignorance, they're not going to see this. We got had a two-thirds. By the most I said in Second Ezra 9, 22, let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain. Let my grape and my plant be kept. With great labor have I made it perfect. He says, verse 7, he said, What then? Israel have not obtained that which he was seeking for, but the election have obtained it, and the rest was were blinded. So you couldn't see this. They're not going to see this. According as it is written, the most I have given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear. How long? Until this day, this very day here. And David said, let their table be made a stair, and a trap and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see, and bow down their back always. Make them have a hard time. Make them have, you know, whatever they do, it'll be a trap for them. That ain't love for us as a nation. Because two-thirds of our people are not good for anything. That's why you got to understand. That's why it's very important to know who it is that you're listening to, that you're going to follow. That's why you better know this word. You better know what this word is saying because you got these people. 1 John 3 and 10. In this, the children of the Mosar are manifest and the children of the devil. Hear that? Children of the Most High manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of the Most High. So we, what is righteousness? Hold that. Neither he that loveth not his brother. Hear that? So you can't love your brother if you're going to say, this is where you're supposed to follow. And it's contrary to what we're going to see in this lesson. Anybody that's saying you should do what somebody's telling you to do, that's contrary to what the Most High is saying, that's not the children of the Most High. That's the children of the devil. If they can't love you, if they tell you to do something that's going to be contrary to your life. You know, I like to call this the new Willie Lynch letter. The division of the people. It's beyond us. <laughs> Trust me, it's beyond just the Israelites. <laughs> it's like those that have against the those that have not. How about that? The haves against the have-nots. <laughs> Keep that in mind. <laughs> so, this is what we're dealing with. In all ways, shapes, and forms. Go to uh, Matthew, the seventh chapter. Matthew the seventh chapter, and we're gonna look at verse sixteen. Matthew seven and sixteen. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Do they know? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. See, that's why I say we're going to be all righteous. We're going to bring forth righteous children. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. What's good? Hold that, Romans 7 and 12, just so you know. Romans 7 and 12, what's good? So everybody say they good. Now, how you doing? I'm good. That's just a fad right now, not even knowing what they're doing. Romans 7 and 12. Wherefore the law is holy. It's the law of the Most High. It's holy. And the commandment holy. And just and good. So. Every good tree. Going back to Matthew 7. 17. Bring it forth good fruit. But. A corrupt tree. Bring it forth evil fruit. You know that? So, the good tree is going to bring forth good fruit. The corrupt tree 
is going to bring forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. There, there go your, your dismissal of everybody going to be saved, even though they're wicked as ever, they hate their brother, they hate their people. They love the enemy. They do whatever the enemy say. They two-thirds of our people. Every tree that bringeth forth good fruit is huge. Excuse me. A good, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. So, and the trees representing men. So, a man that is good, that's keeping the laws of the Most High, not bringing forth these children that are evil. They're not coming back like that. That's what he's saying. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down. Every, every tree, every man that don't bring forth those that's going to keep the lost test commandments of the most high going to be burnt. Going to be burnt in the lake, thrown in the lake of fire. Going to be hewn down and cast it. There it is. And cast it into the fire. See? Going to be cast into the lake of fire. Wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. See? By their fruits, ye shall know. That's why he said, every, every, not every one that says unto me, Mashiach, Mashiach, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. See, a lot of people say they can just do it on their deathbed. Everyone that calls on a Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. That means you got to be doing it while you have these mortal bodies. The law of the commandments of the Most High, doing what he said do, following his rules and regulations. Many will say to me in that day, of judgment, of Mashiach, of Mashiach. Have we not prophesied in thy name? This is deep. Have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. They Bashem of Mashiach, in the name of Jesus. Bashem Yeshua, Yeshia, Yehoshua, whatever name you use. You're going to stand before him and say, Many will say to me in that day, of Mashiach, of Mashiach, have we not prophesied in thy name? In the name of the Lord, sir. in the name of the Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Hashem, my Shachal and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. Listen at this for judgment. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. That's deep. He said, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. That is real serious. That is really serious. He said, you probably need to work iniquity. I never knew you. You ready for that? Matthew 12, 22. Matthew 12, 22. Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb. And he healed him, insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. They bought this possessed man that had a devil, blind and dumb. And he healed him. And so much that he that the dumb man spoke and he was able to see again. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out devils, but by Baal's. That name, the prince of the devils. Most I say he's supposed to be calling on names of other gods and so forth. And the Master of Side knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom, listen to this closely, y'all, especially you in charge of this wicked world. They say, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. They got every day trying to divide everybody, like I said. The new Willie Lynch letter. Only it's not just for us. It's for everybody. Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. So even in your house, you got division in your house, it's not going to stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall he, how shall then his kingdom stand? You see? That's pretty deep because 
I was looking at uh, some footage that I was sent on, um, it was saying the leader of Israel over there, Israelites, the, the people that's ruling in the land of Israel, super part of the land of Israel right now, was telling the people that, that had uh, taken the jab to be against those that have not taken the jab. And they was crying out. The dude was really crying out seriously. He said, that's against the law. Love thy neighbor as thyself. He was quite quoting the law on that one. So that's causing division. That's trying to cause, you know, an uproar against the people. You see? What do you say? Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Verse 26. If Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? But then you look at uh, Revelations 2 and 9. Moshe Shai said, I know thy works in tribulation and poverty. Talking about we the Israelites. But thou art rich. We're rich in knowing this knowledge which we understand of what the Most High has brought forth and knowing this truth. <coughs> Through his word. Right? Because you look at poverty, how are the Jewish people today impoverished? They're not impoverished. They're not in poverty. They're the ones running the money, controlling the money. It said, and I know the blasphemy, the fifty wicked act, of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. So if Satan casts out Satan, how should this kingdom stand? Moshe of Shai called him the synagogue of Satan, right? Revelation three and nine, he said, "Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie, and say that they're the people of the book. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee." That's what Moshe of Shai said. So. He let you know that a kingdom divided against itself shall not stand. Going back to Matthew, the 12th chapter. And Verse 26, and if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? See? And if I by that name, or that demon, cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the spirit of the Most High, then the kingdom of the Most High is come unto you, which he represents. Straight up. Now, look at uh, Ecclesiasticus, the third chapter, verse 1. Hear me, your father, O children, and do thereafter that ye may be safe. Hear the word of your father. For the most I have given the father honor over the children and have confirmed the authority of the mother over the sons. Those fathers that are following the righteous way of the most high. Whoso honor of his father maketh an atonement for his sins. You hear that? Whoso honor his father maketh atonement for his sins. And he that honor of his mother is as one that layeth up treasure. You know, honoring what your mother say, you're going to be like one that layeth up treasures for yourself. Or if you dishonor her, you're going to go down. Because honor thy father and thy mother is the first commandment of promise. That's why he's talking about it. Whoso honoreth his father shall have joy of his own children. 
And when he make up his prayer, he shall be heard. So if you dishonor your father, you're not going to have joy of your children. And your prayer is not going to be heard. He that honoreth his father shall have a long life. He that is obedient unto the most high shall be a comfort to his mother. So you're obedient to the most high will be a comfort to the mother. You got to do what he say do. So if they're not obedient to the most high, going to be discomfort to the mother. That's why it's important that we teach the children the law of statute commandments. He that feared the most high will honor his father and will do service unto his parents as to his masters because they over you. Honor thy father and mother both in word and deed. Like we, we like, like no different than when we come with Colossians 317. Whatsoever you do in word or deed, right? Do all by her summer my shot. Give you thanks to the most high and the father by her summer my shot. So he's telling you, honor thy father and mother, both in word and deed too. That a blessing may come upon thee from them. Hear that? You can receive a blessing from them, honoring them. For the blessing of the father establishes the houses of children, but the curse of the mother rooted out foundations. You hear that? The curse of the mother rooted out foundations, man. That's serious. <laughs> glory not in the dishonor of thy father. Don't be glory in the dishonor of your father. For thy father's dishonor is no glory unto thee. For the glory of a man is from the honor of his father. For the glory of a man is from the honor of his father. And a mother is um, and a mother in dishonor is a reproach to her to the children. A mother that's dishonorable, doing things that are dishonorable, is gonna be a disgrace to the children. My son, help thy father in his age, and grieve him not. As long as he liveth. And if his understanding fail. Get Alzheimer's or. Um, whatever happens. That he did what he did. That his understanding fail. Have patience with him. And despise him not. When thou art in thy full strength. When you you, you strong. And he's getting weaker. Because he's getting older. For the Leaving of thy father shall not be forgotten. But the relieving of thy father shall not be forgotten. And instead of sins, it shall be added to build thee up. It says, in the day of thine affliction, when you be afflicted, it shall be remembered. Thy sins also shall melt away. And following what he say do. As the ice in the fair warm weather. He that forsaketh his father is as a blasphemer. And he that angereth his mother is cursed of the most high. You see how, how important it tells us that honor thy father and thy mother is the first commandment of promise. You see this. My son, go on with thy business in meekness, humility, so shall thou be beloved of him that is approved. The greater thou art, the more humble thyself, and thou shalt find favor before the Most High. See, so these are things that we're looking at that the world has made the generations to come feel a certain way that's not necessarily the right way in the way we should actually honor our father and mother starting with them and each other. Love of thy neighbor is thyself. But he's letting you know. As it is written. Psalms 137 and 12. Psalms 137 and 12. I had to bring that up because a lot of times, you know, we're looking at, even with uh, the plagues that's on this earth, you know, 
the elderly will just be forgotten about. Psalms 37 and 12. The wicked plotted against the just and gnashes upon him with their, with his teeth. You know, so when you look at uh, the just are those that are keeping the commandments of the Most High, trying to make it to the kingdom, and their names be written in the book of life. It says, the wicked plot up against the just. So certain things are being plotted against the just. And what we see now in our day and time, eugenics, population decrease, And he gnashed upon him with his teeth. Trying to devour Jacob, right? Get rid of as many of Jacob as they can. And how, don't matter how many losses there are in the casualty of war, they can care less. But whoever it is, you know that. But it tells you, the most I shall laugh at him. For he see it that his day is coming. See? He say he see that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy. Oh, we got to give it to, it's this play, got to, it's, 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 got, it's all upon the so-called African-American and Indian people. They got to get it first. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation. What more upright conversation can we have in showing forth this truth to the world that everybody can change and develop a relationship with the Most High? No matter who it is. The judgment going to be the judgment. We went to the judgment for what we did. Everybody got to go to judgment like what, for what they done. But you're either going to learn now you're going to learn now. You're going to bow down now. You're going to bow down later. But you're going to bow down. Every knee going to bow. You see? So everybody going to wail. You're going to cry. All you prideful people, you're going to cry. You're going to bust out in tears. What the Most High said? Verse 13, the Most High shall laugh at him. For he see it that his day is coming. He see that his day is coming. That's why he's laughing. So he see that his day is coming. <laughs> Verse 14, the wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy. And the slay such as be of upright conversation. You see? To kill those with an upright conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart. Their sword, the things that they're trying to do to the poor and needy, their sword shall enter into their own heart, into their own heart. And their bows shall be broken. Understand this. Overstand this. What the Most High said? Verse 13, the Most High shall laugh at him. For he see it that his day is coming. See. Psalm 94 and 3. Psalm 94 and 3. Most high, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? How long shall they utter and speak hard things? And all the workers of iniquity boast themselves. They break in pieces thy people. O Most High. And afflict thine heritage. We the children of Israel. They slay the widow. And the stranger. And murder the fatherless. Yet they say what? The Most High. Your power. Shall not see. Neither shall. Power of Jacob regarded. Verse 11. The most I know of the thoughts of man, that were their thoughts, right? That they are vanity, don't mean anything to the most high.
Look at verse 20. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law? Shall the throne of iniquity, the things that the plagues are bringing forth, have fellowship with us, the children of Israel, which frameth mischief by a law? This is, this is misleading everyone to believe there's a righteous act when they framing mischief by a law. They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous. You that? They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous. Who the righteous? How do you be righteous? Deuteronomy 6.25. Go to the law. Let's find out. Deuteronomy 6.25. They gather against the soul of the righteous. So no matter what's going on, they still come back to gathering themselves against the souls of the righteous. Deuteronomy 6.25. And it shall come, it shall, and it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Most High, our power, power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, as he hath commanded us. Right? So, going back to Psalms 94 and 21. They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous. And condemn the innocent blood. You know? They gather themselves together. Because first they said the plague didn't affect us. Then they came back and said, oh, we got to be the first one to get the jab. So called African Americans and Indian people. They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous and condemn the innocent blood. But one thing that I think they forget about, but the Most High is my defense and my power is the rock of my refuge. And he shall bring upon them their own iniquity and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. Yeah, the Most High, our power, the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob shall cut them off. Thus say the Bible. Thus say the word of the Most High. You see? So, from there, let's look at... Uh, Psalms 140. David prophesied as a prophet. Because he wasn't concerned about the way he put all nations under subjected to the Israelites. While his son, King Solomon, had peace for 40 years. Psalms 140 and verse 9. As for the head of those that compass me about, let the mischiefs of their own lips cover them. Hear that? Let burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire, into deep pits, that they rise not up again. Let not an evil speaker be established in the earth. Evil shall hunt the violent man to overthrow him. Hear that? That's why I say, a kingdom divided against itself shall not stand. If Satan casts out Satan, how shall his kingdom stand? Let an Evil, let, let not an evil speaker be established in the earth. Evil shall hunt the violent man to overthrow him. Hear that? What did Mashiach Shai say? Who, what kingdom was Mashiach Shai in? If I might say, who was the superpower of the earth when he came on the earth? He said, let the, what did he say? Evil shall hunt the violent man to overthrow him. Hmm. What did Mashiach Shai say? In Matthew 11 and 12, we're going to Matthew 11 11. But we're going to concentrate on verse 12. What do he say? The evil going to hunt the violent man to overthrow him, right? Matthew 11. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's read verse 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven, which are the children of Israel, suffereth violence, right? 
and the violent take it by force, right? So, when you came on the earth, Romans were the superpower of the earth. It were the Greeks, then they changed the name to the Romans, right? So, the so called Italian Caucasians, the Edomites, were the superpower of the earth. He said, uh, from the days of John the Baptist, his cousin, until now, he said, the kingdom of heaven, which are the children of Israel, suffering violence. He said, and the violent take it by force. You hear that? So he called them the violent. Who was that? The Romans. The violent take it by force. We're under the jurisdiction and going from the Greeks, like we just read about the Greeks with Antioch's Epiphanes. In a woman, the mother and her seven sons. What he did. And as we go into the Feast of Dedication, we get there to go into it in this world. You'll find out more about this wicked Edomite king and what he done. Going back to Psalms 140. And verse 11. Let not an evil speaker be established in the earth. Evil shall hunt the violent man. You know that? Evil going to hunt the violent man to overthrow him. Straight up. From thus say the Most High. I know that the Most High will maintain the cause of the afflicted and the right of the, of the poor. The Most High got his hand on the afflicted. We the afflicted and, the, and we the poor. Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. Power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Say, that's my name forever the more to all generations. We're going to give thanks to the Most High. Power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The upright shall dwell in thy presence. Not the unrighteous, but the upright going to dwell in the presence of the Most High. His eyes are always upon the righteous. See, that's the thing that is being excluded because they don't know the most high. You know? Look, this is this is them. Isaiah 47. This is how they think. We know how they think. Isaiah 47. Uh, verse 10. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. See, they trusted their wickedness. Thou hast said, none seeth me. Remember they said, we, we read it again before. Nobody seeing me. That's that you don't see me spirit, right? Nobody see me. None seeth me. Like what they're doing now. We're not supposed to be seeing anything. And some of our people don't see anything. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. And thou hast said in thine heart, thy said in thy mind, I am. And none else beside me. 